Welcome to my channel, my name is Mark and I am the co-founder of the Trade Trendsetters. In today's video we're going to be making a blue glitter stash jar, so let's get right into it. I'm going to start by mixing some epoxy in one of these measuring cups that have the milliliters on the side. It makes measuring out your epoxy in equal parts really easy. Also, don't forget to wear a mask and have ventilation in the room you're working in. You want to mix your epoxy resin in a gentle fashion for approximately 3 minutes forward and backwards to get it mixed together good. We're going to be adding a blue alcohol ink. I like to add, you know, less at first because you can always add more. Then I'm going to add some smaller uh, blue glitter flakes as well as some bigger chunkier blue glitter flakes. I'm going to go ahead and take a popsicle stick and mix it, you know, nice and slow. Mix it together and see what the consistency and the texture as well as what the color looks like. So I'm actually going for a little darker, so I'm going to add a few more drops of that alcohol ink, as well as a little bit more glitter. So as you can see, it's a little darker as well as has a little more glitter in it, and it's exactly where I want it to be. So this is the latching glass jar I'm going to be using. I got this from Walmart for probably about like five or six bucks. And they actually have these available in a smaller size and in red and green as well. You want to take off the hardware off the top of the jar to prep it for the resin you're going to pour into it. So before I actually pour my resin, I want to make sure the surface I'm working on is a level surface. I use this adjustable leveling board that has two spirit levels on each side as well as four adjustable legs. I adjust each leg by screwing it clockwise or counterclockwise until the levels show that it's level, giving me a perfect level surface every time. When you actually start pouring your resin you want to go really slow and just do a little bit at a time because if you pour too much then it actually will run over the side of the jar making a mess and wasting resin I typically like to go ahead and first make sure I have enough for the bottom part of the jar and then put the rest of the remaining resin into the lid of the jar. So you now want to go ahead and use a heat gun or a torch to gently pop any bubbles that might be in the resin. And look at that guys, I love the way the holographic glitter glistens in the light. Wow. So you always want to make sure you cover your project while it's curing to keep out any dust or debris. Now the resin's fully cured and it looks great and I'm about to make some holographic vinyl decals to put on the jar. going to be using my Cricut Maker to make some pot leaf decals in Design Space. You want to click New Project and then go down to Upload, click Upload Image, click on the Browse, and then you want to go to wherever you have your file that you're trying to cut out. I know where mine are. And you see I got the SVG files, and then you can see I have all kinds of different um, SVG files that I could cut out. But for this jar, I'm actually looking for a specific one. Select the one you want and then click open. It's going to pop up here and then depending what kind of image you're going to use, you would click simple or complex. This is real simple, so I'm going to stick with simple. And what it's going to do is that if it wasn't on a transparent background, you could put it on one and cut out the background. But being that this was already that way, I didn't have to do it. But then if you click the preview cut image, you can see what it's actually going to look like when you go to the, the next page before you go there if you had to remove any more. And then for this, this is a cut image. So I'm going to click cut image. If I was doing a print and cut, then I would click the other one. But that's another video for another time. So as you can see, the image is now in my recent uploads and I can go ahead and click on it and it's going to put it onto the canvas and design space for me. By default, um, design space is automatically going to load the file in the size that it's actually saved as. So whatever dimension it is, is the size that it's going to load by default until you go ahead and make some adjustments. 
So before you cut out the decal, you're actually gonna wanna measure the jar or the area of whatever you're gonna put something on to make sure that, you know, you make it the right size so it's not too big or too small and it looks right proportionately. So for me here on the front of this jar, I feel like three inches is probably the max size I would wanna go, maybe a little less. I also want to measure the width of the jar to see what size leaf I'm going to put on there and as you can see I'm probably going to go with about 2.5 on this one, I don't want it to be too big. So there's actually two different ways that you could change the size of your image. You could go ahead and click on it and then drag on the right bottom corner either in or out to make it bigger or smaller and it's going to keep everything proportioned nicely or you can go ahead up into the top and just type in the exact size that you're going for and then it'll automatically reproportion it to exactly what you want now that it was smaller i'm actually going to have to zoom in a little bit so i can see what's going on a little better so as you can see i decided to end up making the front decal 2.9 inches So being that I actually need two decals for this jar, the front and the top, I'm going to go ahead, right click on it, click duplicate, and that'll make an exact copy of what I actually have on the screen. But as you've seen earlier, the top of the jar is a little smaller, so I'm going to want to go ahead and readjust the size on the second decal to make it a little smaller so that way it'll fit onto the lid the way that I would like it to. So now after looking at both images side by side, I decided to just go ahead and bump the bigger image just up just a little bit to three inches just to make the proportions just a little more distinct from one another. Now that everything's ready, you're going to want to go ahead and click make it. And as you can see, it's going to load up the screen where it shows you what the images are going to look like on the mat after they're cut out. And what this does, it actually lets you know exactly how big of a piece of vinyl you need to cut out to put onto your mat. Because if you don't put a big enough piece of vinyl on your mat, it's going to cut outside of the vinyl and then you're going to have to just redo it. So for some reason, I don't know why, I usually use the Bluetooth to connect my Cricut, but it wasn't working today, so I just went ahead and got out the USB cord and plugged it into the USB on my laptop, and then I ran into the back of the Cricut and plugged it into the port. So for this project, we're actually going to be using a bluish teal holographic vinyl. As I said before, you want to make sure the piece of vinyl you cut out is big enough for the designs you're trying to cut out. I've come to find out in my experience that using a little extra is actually better because sometimes it seems to cut a little farther over than what it shows in design space. Also, you want to make sure the vinyl is firmly against the mat, and this one's a little old and not sticky, so I use blue painter's tape to hold down the corners. You want to go ahead and select the material that you're using. For me, I'm just picking vinyl, and on pressure, I'm actually going to use less, because I've found this machine can actually be a little heavy-handed sometimes. You can go ahead and specifically adjust each material to your specific liking. I just haven't had time to go ahead and do that. Click the go button and watch it go. And there's my two finished decals, they look great. So I like to go ahead and cut the two decals into two separate um, pieces and cut off the excess vinyl that I'm not going to be using and save it in my scrapbook because we don't waste around here guys. Weaving is one of those things where you'll just learn your technique over time, but it's like 
If you have your machine set on the right settings, weeding is really easy, but let me tell you, if your machine is not set on the right setting, weeding could be a nightmare and you would probably want to throw it out the window and think it's a piece of crap and not even want to use it no more. But as you can see, these two weeded really easy, they look great, and I want to re-flatten them down before I go ahead and put on the transfer tape, so that way when I put it down it's nice and flat and doesn't have any bubbles between the transfer tape and the vinyl. As you can see, this transfer tape actually has squares and lines going each way, so you can count two squares as an inch, and you can also use the lines when you're putting it on things as guiding points to help you put it in a nice, straight, even fashion. You want to use a roller or scraper tool to make sure that the transfer tape is pressed firmly against the vinyl so that way when you go to transfer it, it will come off the backing. When removing your stickers, turn your mat upside down and actually pull them off in this motion and it'll help from creating air bubbles between the transfer tape and the vinyl. I always like to make sure my decals are ready to go and come off the backing and make sure I don't have to apply any more pressure. You always want to make sure the surface you're applying your decal on is nice and clean from grease or debris. I like to use 91% alcohol to wipe the outside of my jar to remove any grease or anything like that. And it helps create a nice secure application that will stay permanent. If it's dirty or has oil on it, you might start getting lifting corners and it just doesn't look good guys. So you'll notice on the jars here, there's actually these two lines that are like, I don't know, I think they're like seams in the in the jar or however they make them. But I always like to twist the, the, the metal piece on the top around so that way, the you know, um, I'm gonna put the decal in between the lines so it's not like halfway going down through the front of the jar, if you get what I'm saying. As I previously stated, you can see the lines on the, the actual transfer tape and you can use these lines to uh, help position it on the jar and make it straight up and down or horizontal. Um, so I just used the ruler and re-measured it just to have an idea of like the width of it and what it's going to look like where I place it onto the jar. So you see I used my little tool to hold the jar still and then I'm going ahead and placing the decal in a nice straight position. And before I actually place it on there too hard, I kind of just stick it on there and look at it and make sure I like where it's at. And then I just use my finger and rub each part just nice and slow in a nice even motion, pushing from the, the bottom up to the top, not to cause any air bubbles or anything like that. And now that I have it down a little more, I'm gonna go ahead and use my scraper tool to firmly push it against the glass. By actually pushing it like that, you're actually activating the permanent adhesive in the vinyl itself. So you wanna definitely take your time and make sure you put in enough pressure. You wanna pull the transfer tape away down close in a nice gentle fashion and keep it as close to the jar as possible when pulling away as to not cause air bubbles. As you can see, it looks awesome. There's no air bubbles, it's nice and straight and it looks amazing. So go ahead and just rinse and repeat. Do the same thing for the lid of the jar, just like we did on the front of the jar. Sometimes I actually like to place my project onto the Cricut mat itself and use the lines of the Cricut mat to help give me a better indication of where the center of the design actually is. As you can see, I did the same thing as before, placing it but not pushing down till I looked at it to make sure it was in the position I liked it, and then going ahead and taking my finger and pushing from the bottom and working my way up to the top as to not cause any air bubbles again. So you'll see I'm taking a lot longer this time with this one. It's because the tool itself is a lot bigger than the lid. So I actually had to go in there and make sure that it that it was down there. And as you can see, the corner there was lifting up. You wanna always make sure you, you don't just rip off your decal because the, the little bottom leaf there actually wasn't sticking to the uh, lid. And if I would've just went and go ahead and just ripped it off, it would've just took that piece right off with it. 
I might have been able to save it, but you know, it's not a guarantee that I would have. And at the end of the day, we're not in the business of having to do things over around here. So if we do it right the first time, then we definitely don't gotta worry about it the next time. And as you can see, it's still giving me trouble even after all that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just go ahead and try pulling it from the other side. And as you can see, when I pulled it from that side, nothing lifted. And when I came from the other direction, it kept it nice and flat. And I'm just going to go ahead and take my finger and rub it again. And here's both of them at the same time. They look great. So now it's time to mix up some more epoxy resin to dome the wood of the jar. Again, you wanna mix your epoxy 50 to 50 by volume, not weight. I use the little measuring things on the side of the cup, and then I use this little drill and attachment I have to mix it in a nice gentle motion, forward and backward for three minutes. As before, you always wanna start with less. You can always add more, but if you pour it too much, then it's just gonna go and run over the edges. You're just gonna to have to wipe and clean it up anyway. So I like to just add it and use the heat gun to thin it out a little bit and use my torch to pop any bubbles. And I'm gonna go ahead and tilt it a little bit just to spread it. And then I use the silicone Ouija brush to push the resin to the edges of the jar. And actually it creates like a seamless edge when you rub it along the edge like that. And then use the heat gun to, um, it actually creates kind of like a, a bubble type effect. But if you don't go all the way to the edge, it ends up looking really crappy. And this way, when it's finished, it actually looks like it's all one piece of glass. But you wanna just keep going until you, you, you get it perfect, you know? Uh, take your time, don't rush it. Use your torch to pop any bubbles. As I said before, don't go too crazy with it. Once you're done, don't forget to cover your project to keep out any dust or debris while it cures. And look at that guys, I'm really happy with the way it came out. It's seamless, it looks like it's one piece of glass. It looks like it's actually inside the glass, you guys. So now you're actually gonna wanna go ahead and reassemble the hardware that goes onto the lid of the jar. So you're gonna wanna take the rubber gasket seal and place it onto the bottom of the lid around the edge there. And you're, you're gonna wanna put that little piece to the right to where you can see the latch of the clip because it actually goes over that. And then these two pieces on this side, you squeeze it together in between so it fits into that other metal piece which creates the hinge there. And then when everything's lined up, as you see, it latches and look at that guys look at the finished thing it really looks great and i know the customer's gonna love it i just love the way the holographic glitter just pops in the light and it's a nice jar it really does hold uh quite a bit so that's it guys i'm just gonna pack up this order now i'm writing out a little thank you card to my customer just basically saying thanks for uh purchasing and basically saying that if they have time to kindly leave a review, we'd appreciate it. You know, just asking in a nice way for a little feedback without, you know, seeming too pushy. We also like to include with every order a nice little free decal as a little gift, as a token of our appreciation. Definitely want to make sure that your item is wrapped up in bubble wrap because I don't know about you guys, but I've definitely had my fair share of bad experiences with the post office and having things sent out be broken. So you want to make sure that even if your package is thrown off the top of a building, that it's going to be okay. As you see, I put extra bubble wrap inside the thank you card on the top. So that's the first thing the customer sees when they open it. And I put two fragile stickers on the side just as good measure the shipping label on the top and then that's it it's ready to go if you feel like you got any value out of this video please like comment share and subscribe